what sort of words do you use? Can you give us some examples of when you're asking someone for a large amount of money? Sure. Um, firstly, as a fundraiser, I often don't say anything. <laughs> in most cases, my job's done in the background in the months and sometimes years leading up to that meeting. Um, and when, when it comes to the ask, like I said, I have other people in the room with me. So the first, ideally you have three people. Um, the first is your authority, the person who can, um, who can speak at the high level of the organisation with some passion and authority about how the donation would be used. The second is an influencer, um, someone who the person can't say no to. So a peer, um, an idol, you know, someone who's asked them for a favour before, someone they admire, an industry or social leader, and they're often the best person to actually ask for the support. But if it can't be them, then maybe it's your CEO, and if it can't be them, then on occasion it's the fundraiser. Um, so when it's been me, um, in, and through my experience, you've normally built a relationship with the person, and they trust you um, because either they've worked with you or someone else has provided that testimony. Um, if they've come along again, you're 80% of the way there. The way I ask is I always start with a vision. Uh, as an example, in a previous role, I was asked to seek funds for a big expensive piece of medical research equipment. Um, now, it was a big machine that went ping and did things and was really expensive and year nine science, don't understand it. Um, so, you know, you've got to look at these things and say, it's not the machine that is the fundraising ask. It's what could be by using the machine. So instead of asking for money for a machine, what I asked them to do was to imagine. Imagine a world where we could diagnose a heart attack 10 years before it happened. And that by doing so, we could stop it from ever happening, meaning we could eliminate heart attack. Now, by doing that, it connects the individual to something much more personal, you know, in this case, heart attack, which is so common in society. Um, they might immediately think of a father, an aunt, a son or a daughter, or someone they know who they love, maybe themselves, who has suffered from a heart attack. Once you've got that personal engagement, you've given that vision then you talk about how you're going to achieve that goal and what help you'll need to do that and then ask them to be that help. So you can tell them what you need and then ask them to provide it. That's where you get to the machine. It's way down there. You know, it might be an hour long conversation and the machine is in the last 15 minutes. You've inspired them, engaged them. They want to know more. And they maybe in this process, they actually say, what can I do? We've got to make this happen. You know, that's what you want. You want them to jump in and say, I've got to make this happen. Um, you don't give them an out. When you ask them for what you're asking for, this machine costs four million, perhaps we're asking someone for 500,000. You ask and you trust that you've done your research. You trust in everything you've, you know and you've learned and you wait. You don't give them an out. You don't say, or oh, 250,000 would do this or... You know, don't offer them an easier choice. It's not what you're there for. You're there to encourage them to support something that you know they care about, something that you know they believe in, something which could make a huge difference. And you should feel good about asking that. Um, you should feel proud to ask and you should feel like you're making them proud to be asked. 